Hello and welcome to 1986. Today we're talking about the Dave Pell's, can you see back here, Dave Pell's three ball putter. Obviously some wonderful putters inspired by this particular putter. Now there's some things to discuss. For starters, David Pell's still around. He has his own YouTube channel where he discuss some interesting things. So you might want to check that out. Now there are some things here about this particular putter and some history that I've read that's questionable. For starters, People say that this is the beginning of Odyssey. This was made in 1986. Odyssey, the putter company, was started in 1991. So there's a five year gap between when this came out and when Odyssey came out. Dave Pelz had come out with the teacher putter where you could put some rails so you, you know if you miss hit a ball, they would, the ball would go in, in different ways. And it was a teaching aid to get you to hit the sweet spot. He also focused a lot on lightweight clubs. When Odyssey came out, they didn't come out with three ball putters or teacher putters. They came out with the Rossi and the Rossi 2, and it was interesting. And then Callaway obviously purchased Odyssey in 1997. So what is the David Pell's? If you know the David Pell's relationship with Odyssey, let us know in the comments down below. I couldn't find anything obvious at the making of this video. So obviously, they made <laughs> Odyssey made in 2001 a two ball putter with their white hot design, with their white hot face insert design. So... It is interesting, and I like the strike focus that Dave Pels would try to teach people. You know, it's like it's all about getting that strike right, which is really important. So we should talk about how to identify this interesting putter and some of the materials they used at the review table. So here on the sole, you can see the sticker where it says face balanced, six standard, I believe that refers to the lie, Pels, patent pending. It looks like a red, silver, red decal right here. Then we have these inserts right here. Can you see these little circular plastic inserts? It looks like that is covering up some hardware, like a screw, to mount this forward golf ball. The middle one, you can feel underneath the sticker. It feels like there's another one of these plastic caps. And then the rear golf ball is obviously riveted. There are four little prongs right here, like little legs. Turf interaction, in case you do interact with the turf. And then it curves up here towards the aft portion, the aft portion, where it looks like there's this decal here. It says DA Wybring. Is that the right way to say that? DA Wybring by Dave Pels. That's what it looks like to me. Dave Pels right here. So interesting decal on the aft portion here. Let's show you the side profile. Beautiful side profile. Nice golf balls there. And the other side, you'll see here, maybe this is the best angle to show this. There's an adapter right here, along, you know, with this shaft, and there's a pin right here. So this is a pinned shaft. Pretty interesting. Let's have a look at the face. To me, this looks like a lot of the plastic that we see today, like glass reinforced nylon. Not 100% sure what type of plastic this is, but it is very plasticky. And then the famous, this is what you all came to see, the famous address right here. Simply stunning. And as we move up the shaft, so you can see, again, what looks like a single bend shaft right here with that adapter. True temper, stepped shaft to the label, which again goes to this, let's see if this will focus, D-A-Y-Bring, We-Bring, something. Anyway, David Pell's branded shaft as well. And then we have this squared off, interesting putter grip. It looks like a... Like you can see the cracks through it, just like a rubber slip on grip. And there we have it. Should we get this outside and put around with this a little bit? So for me, this, when I was hitting this, it sounds and feels very plasticky. Just that's how it felt to me. Now, obviously, if I were to make one of these nowadays, I'd have to make it true viz, true viz, true viz with a true viz, or actually have like the Pro V1 line across the top of each one of them. It's interesting how this looks compared to a modern golf ball. Now, this 
in my view, is a training aid. It's something that you take out on the practice screen or you're at home or on the course and you practice your swing, your putting swing. But when it comes to something that I want to put in my bag, and that's what this channel's all about, playing vintage clubs to bring you back those feelings of the olden days, right? To appreciate the history of golf. That's what this channel's about, the feeling and the passion and the excitement and the emotion of it. There are people out there who focus on the science and lowering your score. I'm better than you because who cares how I feel? I just feel like I won and that's all I need. Okay, that's not what this channel's about, all right? So this in my bag doesn't make sense, but owning it as a training aid is interesting. It does bring me back to 86 where people are working on strike and they're using what is considered space age materials at the time. So it is interesting but not something that's going to find its way into my bag. So is it just a collectible or is it still a good teaching aid? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you want to support the channel, visit my Amazon shop. I make proceeds from qualifying purchases. I am an Amazon associate. Hit the thumbs up button if you like this video. Be sure to leave your comment and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I am The Vintage Golfer.